Okay, so if you enjoy solving math word problems, well, then this problem is going to be a nice little challenge for you. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. Dan picked up two-fifths of the books on a bookshelf. Anne picked up one half of the remaining books, and then Tim picked up the last six books. So the question is, is how many total books are there? Okay, so again, that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you have the answer, we'll put that into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second, then of course we'll walk through exactly how to solve this interesting little problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, now before I show you the answer, let's just take one more look at this question. All right, so there's some books on a bookshelf, like in a bookcase. So Dan comes up and he picks up two-fifths of all those books on this shelf. Now what happens next is Anne picks up some books. Okay, so Anne is going to pick up one half of the remaining books. So this happens after Dan picked up the two-fifths of the books. Then lastly, Tim comes along and he picks up the six books that were left. So there's no more books after Tim picked up the last six books. So the question is, how many books are there in total? Okay, so hopefully uh, the way I just read the prom uh, cleared up any confusion about the prom because I want to give you a full opportunity to solve this thing. So let's go and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is the following 20 books. That's how many books there are. Now, if you got this right, that is super impressive. Matter of fact, I have to give you a nice little happy face in A++, maybe like 200%. Matter of fact, if you were in my math class, I would just say, take the rest of the year off. I don't know how you got so good at solving math word problems, but uh, apparently, well, maybe you've been watching that guy on YouTube. Now, if you are totally lost, you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I am totally confused here. Well, no sweat. In a, a few minutes, you'll be looking like this person. Now, notice I didn't say solve the algebra word problem. I didn't say, hey, use algebra to solve this problem because there's different ways you can approach this problem. You should never sell yourself short to try to solve a math problem. Okay, use common sense, use uh, your own creative techniques. Uh, but of course, if you know some algebra, well, then, you know, that is a tool. But if I was to say, hey, use algebra to solve this problem, uh, typically people look like this and like, I don't want to use algebra. Algebra is so scary. Well, algebra is our friend and you're going, and you're going to see how nice uh, algebra comes into play in a problem like this. But let's go and get into the solution right now. So first things first, first we have a math word problem and you always want to use the rule of three, which is to read the problem at least three times before you start doing anything. Okay, now I've already read it a few times and hopefully cleared up any confusion, but if you were reading this problem for the first time all on your own, you know, you're, you're gonna have to kind of read it a few times at a minimum to get the, you know, a good picture in your head and particularly understand the question, right? So the first time out, you're like, okay, I think I know what the question's asking. So read it again, read it again. And then once you're super clear about the information and the question, then you can come up with a strategy. So we're looking for the total number of books that were on this shelf. So we have Dan and Ann and Tim. Uh, Dan picks up uh, you know, some books, then Ann comes along and picks up some books after Dan, and then Tim, Tim picks up the remaining uh, six books. And then of course, there are no more books left. So what can we do here? Well, we're looking for some unknown value. Okay, so that unknown value is how many total books. So let's go ahead and, and use uh, algebra. We'll establish a variable uh, to represent those total number of books. And uh, we'll use the variable n. It could be any variable, x, y, doesn't make a difference. So I'm gonna let n equal the total number of books. Now, uh, once I have this variable that represents the total number of books, I'm gonna have to go back and cycle through this problem one sentence at a time to try to tell this story because I can't solve uh, for this variable n unless I can build an equation. Okay, so I'm thinking in terms, 
how can I build an equation? Well, uh, this is where this problem is going to get quite interesting. And uh, a lot of you, again, if you were able to solve this, it was, uh, you know, uh, very, very good. But uh, this is where, you know, I think a lot of people um, got confused in this problem if they weren't able to figure this thing out. Okay, so let me go ahead and explain this right now. So we have N total books on this shelf, right? So that's what we just said. So Dan comes along and Dan is going to pick up two fifths of these books. So two fifths of what? Well, N books, so that would be two fifths uh, times N. Now, how many books, if Dan picks up two fifths of the books, how many books remain, okay? Well, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, how about three uh, fifths of the books remain, okay? Uh, you would be correct. So three fifths of the books. If you pick up two fifths, well, here, let's just kind of just do some basic math here. So let me see here. One, two, three, four, five. Here, let me make, fix this up a little bit. So one, two, three, four, five. All right, that's close enough. So yeah, we have five fifths, right? We have five of five. Four, one, two, three, four, five. So these two here would represent two fifths. So what remains? Three fifths, right? Because two fifths plus three fifths is five fifths, or five or five or five is of course one. Okay. So what remains is three fifths or one minus two fifths. So we can build an equation here. So after Dan picked up uh, two fifths of the books, what remains? Well, one minus two fifths times n, because n is the number of books. So this is what remains. Okay. After Dan picked up uh, two fifths of the books. So hopefully, you know, hopefully you're like, okay, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I get it. All right, perfect. So I just want to be clear about this because this can be confusing. Now the problem says Anne is going to go and pick up one half of the books that remain. So what remains? Well, this is what remains on the shelf, one minus two fifths times N. So Anne is going to get one half of those books. So that's one half times that amount. Okay, so obviously we have uh, less books and uh, how many books are uh, remain? Well, Tim is going to pick up the last six books. Okay, so how do we kind of put this together in some sort of equation? Well, you have to think about this, but this is hopefully what you came up with. All right, so here is the equation, right? So again, you can't solve for a variable unless you have an equation. So this is how, um, how many books remain, again, after Dan picks up the first two-fifths of the books. So it's going to be one minus two-fifths or three-fifths uh, times n. Okay, that's how much it remains. All right, so that was after, okay, again, Dan picked up his books. Then Anne is going to pick up one half of those books. Okay, so one half of those books is one half of what remains, one minus two-fifths times n. Okay, so this is how much Anne took. Now the difference, okay, uh, so Anne is going to take some, and there's some books left over, right? So this is what was left over after Dan, and then Anne picks up this amount, okay? Uh, and so what's left over? Well, six books were left over, the difference between these two events, right? So after Dan, there was this many books, and then Anne took this many books. What's left over? Well, six books. We were told six books were left, and this is what Tim picked up. So this is the equation we need to solve, but we can't you know, focus on solving this equation unless we understand the story. Now, I'm going to show you at the end of this video, we're going to run through uh, this problem just in case some of you are saying, ah, I'm a C2 math man. Uh, I think you're confused. I don't think you have it right. Well, you, you'll see here that, in fact, this is the correct setup. So if you're confused about this, maybe pause the video, think about it some more. Now, of course, I have 1 minus 2 fifths n. This is 3, uh, three fifths n, but I wanted to break it down in this way. So now at this point, it really comes down to your ability to solve this equation. All right, so let's go to take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, don't you just love the way I sneak that in? Now, I'm going to take a quick second here to uh, just tell you a little bit about my channel. Now, if you're new to my channel, thank you uh, so much for dropping in. If you are, uh, you know, someone who watches my previous videos, thank you so much. If you are a subscriber, thank you, thank you, thank you. It really means all the difference in the world. It's the only way I can really keep, uh, you know, kind of sustained effort on YouTube. And I've been over on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have well over 2,500 math videos from basic math to advanced math and everything in between. 
but I am on a mission, okay? And that mission is to try to help as many people as possible in mathematics. I have a lot of hard lessons learned and, of course, you know, uh, teaching for several decades. You know, I know a lot of stuff. I know how to help a lot of people. You know, you definitely don't want to learn grammar from me or spelling, <laughs> but when it comes to, you know, uh, basic math, you know, middle school math, high school level math, and even some, you know, uh, lower level college mathematics, you know what, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at that stuff, and I want to be able to share my knowledge and experience with those of you that can benefit from it. But I can't continue to grow my channel unless I get your support, and the best way you can support what I do to reach as many people as possible is just to simply hit that subscribe button, and if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well. Thank you so much. Now let's get back to this problem. Okay, so now we have to focus on solving this equation, and this is a whole nother aspect to this problem because some of you might be a little bit confused on what to do here, but this is not that bad. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. So one minus two fifths is what? That's three fifths. So if you're not up to speed on fractions, one is the same thing as five over five minus two fifths. Again, we need the uh, lowest common denominator here. So we're going to subtract the numerator. So that is going to be three fifths n. All right, so that's what this term is. And we have three fifths n. Uh, three-fifths times n, right, minus one-half times one minus two-fifths, which, of course, is, again, is three-fifths uh, times n, okay, and that's going to be equal to six. All right, now, at this point in the problem, you shouldn't be uh, thinking about, you know, uh, the equation set up. Uh, you, you need to be completely focused on solving the equation, all right? So you do have to kind of make these mental shifts when you're solving these algebra word problems or any math word problem. Okay, so what are we going to do next here? Well, we need to multiply uh, these two fractions here. So how do you multiply fractions? Well, you're going to multiply the uh, respective numerators and denominators. So 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 5 is 10. So now we have 3 fifths n minus 3 over 10 n is equal to 6. Well, these are um, like terms. We, you know, we have the same variable to the same power. So we can just subtract these. So I have 3 fifths and 3 tenths. Well, we need a lowest common denominator, which, of course, is 10. So we can just simply multiply this fraction uh, uh, by 2. It's a denominator and numerator. And when we do that, uh, we're going to get this fraction, right? 6 over 10n minus 3 over 10n. And now we have uh, lowest common denominators. So what do we do? Well, when you have the same denominator and you're subtracting, all you have to do is subtract the respective numerators. Okay, so let's going to take a look at that now. So this variable n, okay, some of you might be saying or be confused, is this n down in the denominator in the numerator? No, it's in the numerator. So for example, six times, uh, if you have, uh, well, let me just show you this real quick because a lot of people will get confused. If I have two fifths n, like this in algebra, two fifths n, and you might be saying, well, is the n associated with the denominator or numerator? Well, this is really two fifths times n over one. That n is in the numerator, okay? So you could write 2 fifths n as 2n over 5, right? This is something that confuses a lot of students or a lot of people. So this is equivalent to this, all right? All right, so just so you, uh, you know, are aware of that, because here you can see I have the n in the numerator, right? So I have to subtract the numerators here because we're subtracting fractions. So 6n minus 3n over 10 is going to be equal to 6. All right, so let's go ahead and do that math. So 6n minus 3n of course, is 3n. So now I'm down to this equation here. 3n over 10 is equal to 6. So how do we solve this? Well, this is a proportion. So uh, 3n over 10 is equal to 6 or 6 over 1. Okay, so this is the easiest way to solve this. And uh, we can use something called the cross product. We can simply cross multiply. So 3n times 1 is 3n. And 10 times 6 is 60. And to solve for n, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 3. 60 divided by 3 is 20. Okay, so n is equal to 20. Now, some of you might be saying, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't know. I'm kind of in doubt that you did this right. Well, let's go back, and this is something you should do, right? If you um, doubt an answer, uh, that's actually a good thing, okay? In other words, if you're not, if you don't have confidence in your result, you should think about it, okay? And the best way you can... Uh, get confidence in your result is to go back, uh, take a look at your answer, and uh, plug it back into the actual problem and see if it makes sense. All right, so let's see what happens if, in fact, there are 20 books. So if there's 20 books on this shelf and Dan comes up 
and takes two fifths of the books, right? So this is what the prom says. Well, he's going to take two fifths of 20. So what's two fifths of 20? Well, two, two fifths times 20 or 20 of one. So five goes into 20. What? That's four. Four times two is eight, right? So two fifths of 20 is eight. And hopefully you're up to speed on your fractions. So he takes eight books. So if he takes eight books from these 20 books, how many books remain? Well, it's going to be 20 minus eight. So 12 books remain. Okay. So what happens next? Well, there's 12 books on this shelf. And then Anne comes up and says, hey, I'm going to take half of these books that remain. So what's one half of 12 books? Well, one half of 12 books is one half times 12 or six books. So that's what Anne takes. And how many books remain after she takes the six books? Well, 12 minus six, Anne took six. Uh, so 12 minus 6, of course, is 6. So 6 books remains, and that's what uh, Tim gets. Uh, you know, he gets uh, the last remaining 6 books that are on the shelf. Okay, so again, uh, hopefully this little problem was interesting. And, you know, you didn't have to use algebra to solve this. You could have, you know, reasoned through this. There's different approaches you can, uh, you know, use to solve uh, math problems. But really, you know, uh, you want to to develop uh, the skills to, uh, you know, use algebra, okay? Because there's simply going to be problems that are going to be, uh, you know, much more advanced or complex that you're just not going to be able to kind of reason through them. But in this particular case, I think uh, some of you could have figured this out through trial and error or common sense. And if you figure that out or if you figure this problem out using your own kind of special technique, that is fantastic. So kudos to you. Now, if you uh, want to practice more, um, you know, algebra or math word problems, I have a ton of these type of problems on my channel. I really enjoy making these type of problems. It's, they're just, you know, a really application of mathematics. But before you, um, you know, try these problems, you need to make sure you have the correct, you know, skills or you have strong math skills because solving word problems are an application of the math skills that you learn. Now, if you need help with any level of math, okay, whether it's basic math or algebra or whatever the case is, check out my main courses. You'll find links to them in the description. Now, if you're not a math student, uh, you might want to check out my math foundations course. With uh, That's just a quick review of basic math or my math skills rebuilder course, uh, which course in that uh, particular course, I'll teach you basic math, some algebra, some geometry, even some trigonometry, and some basic probability and statistics. But the other courses speak for themselves, which are pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two. So again, you know, you're going to be doing word problems at these various levels of math, right? So if you're in pre-calculus, you're going to be doing some pretty advanced uh, word prompts. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.